tonight. End of the line. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida announces his decision not to contest for the leadership of the ruling LDP, encouraging a fresh start for the party. Constitutional crackdown. Thailand sees similar woes as Prime Minister Sretha Thavsin is removed from office following a court ruling on violating the constitution. Turning the tables. Ukraine presses on deep in Russian territory despite denial from the Kremlin on a weakened position. The conflict still at a stalemate. Masterful recreation. Van Gogh's Starry Night comes alive on green turfs with the vision of one avid enjoyer of art. All that and more as World Years Tonight starts right now. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News this Wednesday evening. We have lots of updates to bring to you tonight from the road to the White House to the new developments in the unrest in Bangladesh. But we begin tonight in Japan. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida will not seek re-election as leader of the ruling Liberation Democratic Party, which he says needs a new start. The 67-year-old LDP veteran is expected to step down as the Prime Minister after the party elects a new leader in September. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said on Wednesday he will step down in September, ending a three-year term marred by political scandals. The most obvious first step to show that the Liberal Democratic Party will change is for me to step aside. I will not run for the upcoming presidential election. I will continue to support the new leader who will be elected through the presidential election as a comrade. As the head of the organization, I have no hesitation in taking responsibility for a serious situation, the fundraising scandal caused by a Liberal Democratic Party member. His exit triggers a contest to replace him as president of the party and, by extension, become the leader of the world's fourth biggest economy. Kishida's public support has been sliding due to revelations about the LDP's ties to the controversial Unification Church and unrecorded political donations made at party events. However, the prime minister has also faced public discontent over stagnant wages as Japan's cost of living soars. The new LDP leader will face challenges including uniting the ruling party, managing inflation and geopolitical tensions with China and the United States. Kishida is Japan's eighth longest serving post-war leader and oversaw massive stimulus spending during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, he's stuck with the hawkish security policies of his predecessor Shinzo Abe, who was assassinated in 2022. Abe had unveiled Japan's biggest military buildup since World War II, with a commitment to double defense spending aimed at deterring neighboring China from pursuing its territorial ambitions in East Asia through military force. Still in the region, there are more changes in leadership. A Thai court has dismissed Prime Minister Sreta Thavsin for pointing to his cabinet, a former lawyer who was once jailed. The Constitutional Court ruled that Sreta had violated the rules on ethics with the display of defiant behaviour. Tavisin said he had performed his Prime Minister's duties with honesty and had done his best after a court dismissed him for a gross violation of ethics. He also said he accepts the judiciary's decision. Shreta's removal after less than a year in power means Parliament must convene to choose a new Premier, with the prospect of more uncertainty in a country dogged for two decades by coups and court rulings that have brought down multiple governments and political parties. Thailand's lower house of parliament will meet on Friday to choose a new prime minister following Sreta Thavisin's dismissal by a court. This is according to the former leader's chief of staff. Moving to neighbouring Bangladesh now, a murder investigation has been opened into Bangladesh's former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina over the police killing of a man during civil unrest. Six other top figures in the previous government are also being investigated following weeks of deadly unrest in the capital, Dhaka. In Bangladesh, families are asking questions. Amidst high tensions, relatives of missing persons gathered to demand justice for their loved ones. Mohammed Yunus, head of the caretaker government, promised action and justice. This comes as Bangladesh Sheikh Hasina has been named in a newly opened murder investigation over the killing of a shop owner during last month's violent protests. 
that forced the leader to flee the country for India. Initially student-led protests, the unrest continues in Dhaka despite the end of Hasina's iron-fisted tenure. In her first statement post-dramatic exit, Hasina has demanded an investigation into what she called the killings and vandalism that ousted her. Urging supporters to gather on Thursday to commemorate the assassination of her father, the founder of Bangladesh. And now some updates on the wildfires in Athens, Greece. Greece's chief fire brigade spokesman has said that there are no longer any active wildfires in the wider Athens area, but officials remain on high alert. Milder winds and extensive efforts by the emergency services have helped bring the blazes under control. On Monday afternoon, gale force winds sent flames bounding through this suburb in Greece, just 14 kilometres from central Athens. By Tuesday, some residents had returned to find their land scorched, cars blackened, houses in ruins and the scale of disaster beginning to sink in. Nearby, flowers lay at the site where a woman's body was recovered. The Moldovan citizen in her 60s was identified as the first known victim of the fires, which have been declared Greece's worst this year. According to local authorities, milder winds and the efforts of more than 700 firefighters had helped contain the blaze. 40 hours after it first broke out, there was no longer an active front, only scattered hotspots, according to the Civil Protection Minister. But the risk had not yet abated, with winds expected to pick up again. Fires are common to grey summers, but under climate change they could be exacerbated by more extreme conditions. Last winter was the country's hottest on record, and the current summer is expected to follow suit. Information on the war in Ukraine now. Kyiv says it's captured 74 villages in the Kursk region and vowed to stop its offensives in mainland Russia if Moscow agrees to a fair peace deal. However, Russia shot back, saying it's in the process of pushing back the Ukrainian military. Meanwhile, the governor of Russia's Belgorod region has declared a state of emergency. Ukraine continued to push ahead with this offensive in Russia's Kursk region for the eighth day on Tuesday. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said that his military was able to capture 74 villages in the region, while Kyiv's top commander said that its forces were able to advance three kilometers in one day, taking control of an additional 40 square kilometers of Russian territory. Ukraine says it has no intention of occupying Russian territory, adding that it would stop its offensives in mainland Russia if Moscow agrees to a fair peace deal. However, Moscow is looking to repel the Ukrainian forces, saying it's already in the process of doing so. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, Ukraine has already lost up to 420 troops in the past 24 hours, and over 2,000 soldiers have been killed since the incursions began on August 6. While the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry called on Russia to agree to restore peace in the two-and-a-half-year-long war, Russian President Vladimir Putin a day earlier said no negotiations could happen with those that attack civilians and civilian infrastructure, slamming the eight-day-long incursion. Meanwhile, continued fighting in the Kursk region is also raising major concerns over threats it can pose to energy infrastructures in the region. Fighting took place in a region where a pipeline carrying Russian natural gas to Europe via Ukraine is located, while missile fragments were found near the Kursk nuclear power plant. Russian nuclear operators say that the power plant is currently functioning normally, and radiation levels at the plant and the surrounding area are stable. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Come back. U.S. President Joe Biden said a widely anticipated Iranian attack on Israel to avenge assassinations of senior terror figures may be starved off in Israel and Hamas managed to reach a long-sought ceasefire deal in Gaza when talks resume later this week. Hamas has said it fired two rockets targeting Israel's Tel Aviv, but the Israeli military said one fell in the sea off the central city while the other did not cross into the country's territory. Local media outlets said explosions were heard in the city on Tuesday local time, but no casualties were reported. 
Amid escalating tensions in the region, U.S. President Joe Biden has said Iran could hold off on a retaliatory strike on Israel if a ceasefire deal between Hamas and Israel is reached. So we'll see what Iran does and we'll see what happens if there's any attack. But I'm not giving up. His remarks come after Iran vowed a severe response against Israel over the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh, who was killed in Tehran after attending the Iranian president's inauguration. While a ceasefire deal still remains uncertain, the Palestinian leader has reportedly said Iran could soon decide whether or not to retaliate against Israel. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, who's currently visiting Moscow, told Russia's TASS news agency on Tuesday local time that the decision could be made in the next few days, or even the next few hours. While adding that Palestinians are against war, he noted the U.S. is actively involved in ceasefire negotiations, although it's hard to foresee what will happen. And on the road to the White House, a new poll suggests former President Trump holds a slim five-point advantage over Vice President Kamala Harris in the battle for Florida's 30 electoral votes. Trump stands at 47 percent support among likely voters in Florida in a Suffolk University survey, with Harris at 42 percent. And for more on this, we have Adhidharna World News Special Correspondent Suzanne Janali from Toronto in Canada. Yes, Sanavi, the survey of 500 likely Sunshine State voters indicates Democrat turned independent Robert F. Kennedy at 5%, Libertarian Party nominee Chase Oliver at 1%, and Green Party candidate Jill Stein and independent Connell was registering at less than 1%. Florida was once the largest of the battleground states in presidential elections. Former President Obama narrowly carried the state in his 2008 and 2012 White House victories. And Trump edged out Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton to win the state in 2016. But four years ago, in his 2020 re-election defeat, Trump won Florida by 3.3 points over President Biden, which was the biggest winning margin in the state in a presidential contest in 16 years. New voter registration numbers released Monday in Florida indicate Republicans with a 1 million person advantage over the Democrats. That marks a vast turnaround from four years ago when and Democrats held a slight edge in voter registration. Over to you, Sanami. Thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Susan Shanali from Toronto in Canada. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro called for the state to use an iron fist after deadly protests in response to his July re-election, which has been dismissed at home and abroad as a sham. As the official protest death toll rose to 25, Maduro urged severe justice for the violence he blames on the opposition, which insists its candidate Edmundo Gondales had won the vote by a landslide. After almost losing power, President Maduro has vowed to tighten his hold on the situation in Venezuela as post-election protests beset the country. Since the highly contested vote, protests have claimed 25 lives. Rights groups say 2,200 people have been arrested in what authorities are calling a crackdown on violent criminals. Meanwhile, the opposition have called on people to take to the streets. Africa's top public health body declared what it termed a public health emergency of continental security over an outbreak of MPOX that has spread from the Democratic Republic of Congo to neighbouring countries. The African Centre for Disease Control and Prevention said the viral infection was spreading at an alarming rate. MPOX is transmitted through close contact and causes flu-like symptoms and pus-filled lesions. The new variant of an endemic strain of the virus appears to spread more easily through close contact, particularly among children. The CDC says that over 15,000 cases and 461 MPOX-related deaths were reported in Africa this year so far. 
That's a 160% increase from the same period last year. Mpox has been endemic in parts of Africa for decades after it was first detected in humans in 1970. A milder version spread to over 100 countries in 2022, largely through sexual contact. It prompted the World Health Organization to declare its highest level public health emergency. The emergency ended 10 months later as the health crisis had come under control. An Ugandan court found Thomas Coelho, a commander in the rebels' Lord's Resistance Army, guilty of dozens of war crimes. The first time a senior member of the group has been tried by Ugandan judiciary. Thomas Coelho is the first senior member of the Lord's Resistance Army to have been tried by Uganda's judiciary. The LRA was founded in the 1980s with the aim of overthrowing the government. Under the leadership of Joseph Kony, who claimed to be a spiritual medium, the LRA terrorized Ugandans and battled the military for nearly 20 years. Kony's LRA was notorious for horrific brutality, the use of child soldiers, mutilation, and sexual abuse. Kony fled and is wanted by the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Quoyella was captured in Congo in 2009 and has been in pre-trial detention for 15 years. Quoyello has said he was kidnapped by the LRA as one of its many child soldiers and denied the more than 70 charges against him, which included murder, rape, enslavement, torture and kidnapping. The court found Quoyello guilty on 44 charges. The judges said next week they would begin conducting hearings before setting a date for Quoyello's sentencing. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Welcome back. Amidst the rolling hills of central Bosnia, entrepreneur Halmik Zurich transformed his long-time dream into reality, recreating Vincent van Gogh's starry night as a natural park. After purchasing two hectares of land 20 years ago, Zurich expanded the property to 70 hectares without a clear vision. Six years ago, inspired by spiral-shaped tractor tracts, he decided to develop a starry night theme park, a moment he said defined the rest of his life. Sukik Park comprises some 130,000 lavender bushes and other aromatic herbs, creating colorful circles and spirals across 10 hectares. And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the globe. Stay tuned as Anuradha Vikramasinghe will join you next with the nightly business report. Thank you for watching. Good night.